together. Unity of Delray Beach is an expanding center of Christ's light, mighty to attract its good and to radiate good to others. I'm going to personalize that statement. I'll make it once and then I'll ask you to join with me. I am an expanding center of Christ's light, mighty to attract my good and to radiate good to others. Together, I am an expanding center of Christ's light, mighty to attract my good and to radiate good to others. We know that to be the truth of our being. We also would like to welcome anyone who has joined us for the first time this morning. Is there anyone uh, who's joined us has not been here before? Wonderful. So we have a gift for you. Uh, and we thank you for coming this morning. We know that you're a blessing to us and you'll be blessed in return. So thank you. Wonderful. I'm going to share a blessing for a church by James Dill Freeman. And we hold this to be the truth for our church. This is God's house. May we who come here not only find out about God, but find God. May there be beauty in this place, but especially may it be a place where men, women, and children become aware of the beauty in themselves. May this be a place of worship. May this be a place of instruction. May this be a place of singing. May this be a place of prayer. But for us who worship and take instruction and sing and pray, may this always be a place of inner stillness where we may listen and hear when God speaks. May whoever ministers here minister in love. May whoever teaches here teach truth. May whoever serves here serve pleasantly. May everyone come into this house in expectation and go with thanksgiving. And may anyone who comes needing help go feeling blessed. May this be such a house that Jesus Christ or any stranger would fill in it that they were with friends. And for Charles Fillmore, fill us now with richness of spirit and purpose. God bless this church with substance so that success and prosperity are the order of every day. And so it is. Our daily word for today is balance. And the affirmation is, I honor life's shifting rhythms. Sometimes trying to balance my schedule, meet my obligations, and even find time for the things I enjoy can leave me scrambling to figure out how to fit it all in. Today, I take my cue from nature and notice the rhythm of the seasons and the tides, the cycles of growth, and the order that underlies all things. I appreciate how seamlessly the natural world balances itself and restores itself to harmony. This gift of harmony and balance lives in me. I honor myself when I flow with it instead of forcing my will upon it. I listen to my body's many signals. I rest when I'm tired, eat when I'm hungry, and socialize and seek solitude as I need to. As I care for myself, I find balance. And from Ecclesiastes 8 verses 15, for there is nothing better for people under the sun than to eat and drink and enjoy themselves. So that's our beautiful daily word to honor life's shifting rhythms. And I want to state our weather blessing. We want this to be true for us, but also for anyone who is affected by a weather event. Divine love prevails in all weather conditions. The earth is blessed, and harmony, order, and protection are assured. So I also need to introduce or reintroduce, most of you are familiar with our guest speaker this morning, Reverend Greg Barrett. Greg has been a, a unity minister for 42 years. He served at a number of churches, uh, including this one. And we're just so honored that he's back 
with us to speak um, in a series that he's put together. He currently re uh, teaches for the Center for Enlightenment and is a staff writer for Daily Word. So let's give Greg a warm welcome. And just a foreshadowing, he's going into the deep end this morning, so be prepared. <laughs> Put your goggles on and your sword. You'll be good. Um, I have a few announcements I'd like to make. Uh, one is just we always like to remind everyone of what's going on here at the church each week. Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. here in the sanctuary is our prayer group. Wednesday evening at 6.30 here in the sanctuary is our meditation group. Wonderful times of coming together, praying and meditating in a group, which is so powerful. So please take advantage of those opportunities if you can. And then Thursday mornings at 7 a.m., uh, through a teleconference, we have Prosperity Coffee. It's a group that you can join at any time. Uh, we are currently covering Lowell Fillmore's book, The Prayer Way to Health, Wealth, and Happiness. So uh, there's information about that in the Narthex if you need the call-in number um, it, or call the church office. You can also sign up for a monthly prayerful phone visit from our uh, chaplains. This is another wonderful service that the church provides. So you get a monthly call from the chaplains with prayers or, or affirmations. So if you'd like to sign up for that, you can either email the church office or call the church office. And so our email is unitychurch at unityschool.com. And our bookstore, just a reminder, our bookstore is open, so feel free to um, browse after the service. We have many wonderful things in our bookstore, so take advantage of that as well. And that concludes our announcements for this week. If you ever have any questions, you can call the church office. They're always happy to help you out. And now we're going to take our statement of truth, and I'm going to ask you to get comfortable in your seats. Have anything in your hands, you might set that aside. You're welcome to close your eyes. I'll take our statement one time and then I'll ask you to join with me. There is only one presence and one power active in my life and in the universe. God, the good, omnipotent. Together, there is only one presence and one power active in my life and in the universe, God, the good, omnipotent. So we breathe into the truth and the power of that statement, taking it into the core of our inner being, where we live, move, and have our being for that deeper understanding. There is one presence and one power active in our lives and in the universe. God, the good, omnipotent. And that presence and power resides within us and all around us. So we let go of any cares or concerns. And we live boldly, confidently in that knowing. We say, thank you, God. Amen. And now we'll sing the Lord's Prayer in preparation for our time of meditation.
just by being in it and being it. Surely I am this presence. My insides, my interior self is the presence of this one. And I can feel the evidence of this presence all around me and moving through and within. Thank you. I'm just going to give thanks. For the presence of pure being. And I bring this presence into its greater expression by noticing appreciating, being grateful for, and immersing myself in this presence. I absorb this presence, magnetically draw it unto me and feel my awareness expanding and lifting. I am being drawn into a greater experience of this presence. Not separate from me. Oh, to awaken in the presence of pure being. just get quiet enough to feel and sense and know myself in, through, and as the presence. I am aligned with this presence of God within me. sky of the presence of God 
And just like the sky, I am not concerned with the goings on on the ground. I just am. And thoughts and feelings come and go and form as the clouds do and dissipate on their own. But I am that pure being, that presence that just dwells as the sky, infinite, expansive, whole, unlimited. Thank you.
uh, to be a mother, you're going to be a good mother and, uh, and bake cookies and a good wife and uh, none of this career business and uh, don't just let go of this whole idea that God's going to talk to you. That's just not going to happen. But you did have a life plan and God does have a plan for your life. But the God that has a plan for your life is so much more than some puppet master in the sky that's controlling your destiny. The, the, the God that, that has a plan for your life is creating that plan for your life with you and as you, you've got a lot of help. This is the deep end of the pool. I got into some stuff I've never talked about on Sundays, but I'm going to do it. And that is that before you came into this lifetime, you met with, call it the karmic board. I don't know. The, 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 those that help you look at your possibilities and make the choices that you chose to come into this lifetime with. And you say, how in the world did I choose this? Or maybe you feel good about it. I don't know. Because you see, the stuff out of which you created your life plan is both positive and negative. You went through many experiences through eons of time. And you gathered these experiences. And some of them were very positive. You learned talents and abilities. You created strengths and, 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 and sacrificed in love. And, and maybe you were an a nun who who prayed to your your blessed virgin and then you were a, a Buddhist in Southeast Asia with your uh, bowl full of uh, pray, uh, begging for rice and, and uh, chanting and, and you built up you built up you built up positive things and it's called karma and now we were talking this morning about how karma is seen as some kind of horrible negative thing. It's it's our generation's uh, sin. <laughs> Your karma will get you. Bad karma. That guy, he's going to get it because of his karma. But karma, this is the karmic ball, is both positive and negative. And so you've accru accrued and accumulated karma from lifetime to lifetime, building up potentials on the positive side. Maybe Elvis Presley was a was a gon gondola uh, a driver in uh, in in Venice, and he sang his heart out. You know, they sing to the people, and he just loved it so much that he and he was also very religious, and he he prayed that he could have bigger audiences and bigger audiences, and sure enough, he got them. But then the addiction kicked in because you see, back in another time, they smoked opium and drank wine and be built it up over the lifetimes and it came into fruition in this lifetime as well because karma is both positive and negative. What's karma? It's just the law of cause and effect. It's the Sanskrit word for it. That's all it is. It's very Christian. As you sow, so shall you reap. If you use that sword, you'll die by the sword. It's part of our folk aphorisms. What goes around comes around. And it's both positive and negative. And you accrue and accumulate essentially a, a balance of these things. And you it's the stuff, this is your karmic ball, out of which you created your life plan. And so how is this my life plan? Well, here's the uh, rubber band that's my uh, crusader's wife who resented and was angry at those louts who going up, when going off to pillage their way across Europe on their way to the Middle East. And here's the, the Chinese warlord who, whose civilization was destroyed by the Mongolians from the north uh, who, who came in and, and, and took over. And here's the, the nun or the priest who started off so idealistic and ended up having too good of a time. And here's the, here's the Native American chief who, who decided everybody better do what he said until he drove his 
whole tribe into, into oblivion and on and on in these different lifetimes and these different experiences. And the point, let me just cut to the end. The point of the game of life is to reduce the size of your karmic ball to let go through forgiveness and through going through these experiences in life, you let them go. You let go of the karma, the positive and the negative. That is what you agreed to before you came in. That's your life plan. And you decided, you know, I want to I want to finally forgive this person who's going to be my mother-in-law. <laughs> or or or, or I'm, I, I'm, I I I I really want to um, Maybe I was not a good father in that lifetime, but maybe I will be in this lifetime. I have a chance to, but that's where free will comes in, because maybe I don't want to, and I'm just not going to. And then i got to come back again, and I add some more rubber bands, and my karmic pole gets bigger rather than smaller. The point is, of the game of life is to reduce the size of your karmic ball. And I know this is some deep stuff, and I know this is probably I could get into a lot of trouble in some churches, but not in this one, because Mary Cufferly was here. My gosh, she was on the deep end every single Sunday. <laughs> you know, I loved her. So, so I'm talking about, about your life plan and how before you were born, you created that life plan. There was a group of us in the classes uh, in the, my church in Kansas, we got together and put on a, a skit of the karmic board and a uh, soul that was ready to plan the, gar the life plan. And we were helping. I was on that board. I was the character, one of the characters on the board. And this person came up and they were shown how they created um, certain talents. They, could, they had learned how to stitch and to knit and to sew. And now they could be a dress designer and, 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 and maybe uh, move to New York or maybe and then they can become very wealthy and they can learn all these different things and have cruise ships and, and condos and things all over and wonderful things. Or they'd also created a different possibility. They had accrued the spiritual credits through their religious practices and their devotion and their loving people and taking care of people and all these good things. And they could have the possibility in this lifetime coming up of opening the trap door and leaving the limitations of the third dimensional life and moving into the fourth dimensional life. Okay, we're getting deep here. The third dimensional life is just a box. It's a box of good and bad, positive and negative. It's all the stuff that's made up to mix metaphors of this stuff, the karma. But we have a we reach a point, your whole point in your spiritual evolution, you reach a point where you have the opportunity to let, to open up the trap door out of it, that lets you out of that box and allows you to move into the higher consciousness that isn't stuck in a box. This third dimensional life is just a box. All the things that you thought you wanted is just within the box. All the things you didn't want are in the box. All the people that did you wrong are in the box. And all the people that did you right are in the box. But it's all in the box of the third dimensional ego experience. That's all it is. And that person in that, karma, in that skit we were doing had a choice. Do you want to have all these fulfilling experiences materially and put all your energy into that, put your Put your money down on that. And, and then, at the end of your lifetime, you're going to find out that you really didn't want it after all. It didn't fulfill you because it never does. It never does. The material stuff never fulfills you. Hey, you enjoy it for a while. There's nothing wrong with that. But So they, they were given this opportunity that you'll have all this these goodies and then you'll wake up and you'll die at the end of your life and you'll realize that you're going to have to come back again. See if you're ready to move, open the trap door and move out of the third dimensional ego life into your soul, into your spiritual life, into your higher consciousness, the Christ consciousness, the spiritual self. Or do you want to do it in this lifetime? In which case, there's a certain sort of situations that have to be set up that'll make you maybe uncomfortable enough that you might wake up and choose it. 
Have you ever thought about that? That those unfortunate experiences, it was so, so unfair that you haven't forgiven yet. All those bad things that happened to you, maybe some of them came into your life so that you have to, you had the opportunity to go, hey, I'm going to wake up and I'm going to do something spiritual. I'm going to go into recovery. Oh my gosh, well first you got to be an addict. Oh. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to learn how to forgive and love. Well first you got to have somebody who did you wrong. Oh. So, 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 so this person in the skit had the second option. And, and in the skit, they chose the second option. In the skit, they decided, you know, I'm, I'm not going to just do the material thing in this lifetime. I'm going to move and, and open up the trap door. Haven't you had enough? Haven't you, aren't you ready to move out of the third dimensional life into the fourth dimensional life? Aren't you ready to move out of the, out of the box? Because it's just a box. As wonderful as that cruise ship is, it's just in a box. Now, I never talk about politics, but I'm going to talk about politics right now. But in a general sense, in that on Tuesday, I promise you there will be something that will happen that will make you very, very unhappy. And there will be something that will happen that will make you very, very happy. Because it's all in a box of positives and negatives. And when you Get to the point where you're ready to move out of the box and open the trap door. You look down into the box and you see it for what it is. It's the stuff out of which your soul is developing. That doesn't mean that some of the things aren't this or that, but you, you have a whole different perspective. So when that person rejects you or you didn't get what you wanted or when you won the lottery or you got the thing you wanted, it's all in a box designed to get you to the point where you're willing to open up. And the stuff that I'm talking about here, all this fourth, moving into the fourth dimensional consciousness out of the third dimensional box, was taught by Charles Fillmore, Unity's co-founder, in the book, Adam Smashing Power of Mind, chapter five, he talked about it. It's about, it's called thinking with the fourth dimensional mind. They don't talk about it much in churches anymore, but Charles Fillmore was right there, and we're going back to it, because these are the basics. This is why we're here. This is why you're in this room. You, when you created your life plan with whatever help you received at that time, you had a possibility to possibly open this trap door. And when you open that trap door, it doesn't all happen at once. It may not take a, a month or a year or 10 years. It, it, it's a process, but you open up and begin that process. You really, really commit as I shared six weeks ago, you have a desire in your heart. It's a desire for to know the truth of your being, to get to know God, to know your soul, to awaken in your spiritual infinite self. I don't know how you put it. And then you back it up with your commitment and you back that up with your will. And that gets you out of the box. It begins the process of getting you out of the box. So, so whatever happens on Tuesday or this afternoon, when you're watching the Dolphins or whatever team, we're in Florida and everybody has a different team. It's just in the box. It doesn't mean you don't have feelings or desires or whatever, or thoughts or opinions. It doesn't mean that there isn't some objective stuff going on, but you see it from a higher perspective. You know, they say children can remember things from before this time and I had one, you know, I've had so many friends who've had children who can remember things my own children did. They, they could remember things from their past, past lives, etc. Took, 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 took my kids to, to uh, Niagara Falls and, and one of them was just freaked out because they remembered a time that they drowned and they got to work on that, work through on that. But one of my kids could remember that's when they were very, very young so young that's before we uh, teach them not to remember these things it's better to forget because people won't accept it but they said when, when I when, before I was born I met with these people and decided what I was going to do in this life and they even talked about how they could remember picking what their gender was and because they could have more fun <laughs> and, and and this is a little child's understanding you can take it from that little child that you had, you had a life plan. 
Now, the life plan is not etched in concrete. It goes through stages and steps. There's sometimes there are forks in the road. For instance, you could be at a certain point, you could decide, oh, I, I want to I go towards this uh, career that would take all my energy, or I could go over here and take care of this person in love and, uh, uh, and, 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 and maybe move out of the trap door. These are things that we get those opportunities, but the thing about it is it's never too late. Your life plan is always active in your life. I know there's somebody here who's going, oh, I'm, you know, I'm 75 years old and it's too late for me to do it. No, I'm 25 years old and it's too early for me. No, it's, it's, you have the opportunity to engage with your life plan. So how do you do that? Well, first you activate it with your desire and then you back that up with your commitment and your will. And it shows up as taking your time to meditate and pray or do your spiritual work maybe when you take your walk and doing your journaling and observing your thoughts and your feelings. And for heaven's sakes, doing the forgiveness work because nothing gets rid of the rubber bands faster than or other than forgiveness. You forgive yourself, you forgive others. The bottom line of this lifetime is uh, forgive, forgive, forgive. If you don't know what to do, forgive. And if you don't know what to forgive, just forgive yourself anyway. Because that's what it's about. And all those interactions in your life, you chose them. You chose your parents. Oh no, I didn't choose those people. Yes, you did. And they chose you. You owed them something or they owed you something, both positive and negative. Yeah, you can hope something positive, you know, in a good way. <laughs> you, 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 sometimes, you know, you think about people who have made these incredible discoveries and they benefit, save thousands of lives. Maybe they were the general who killed thousands of people. I don't know. They're, maybe they're balancing it out. I don't know. That's something you may or may not agree with. But, but you have the opportunity. Your parents, you pick them. Your children, you picked them. And you picked the, the significant others in your life and your siblings and where you live and, and, and what opportunities would be there for you. And you have chapters in your life. I went through a chapter here. You guys all got to see it three years ago. I was at a point where I could retire and do a certain kind of spiritual work that I really couldn't do as long as I was trying to, you know, be plugged into the day-to-day -day, uh, uh, stuff that I had to do as a, as a minister. And, and I remember even before that, standing up here and saying to you, I don't feel like I'm a minister anymore, I'm a teacher. <coughs> well, I was, it was starting to bubble up. It was, a, it, it was an opportunity. And you get the choice because you have free will. I'm, I want to go this direction or I'll go this direction. And I followed my heart. I followed what my heart told me to do rather than what my head told me to do. Because in my head, it didn't make any sense. It was just my heart. So in your life, look back over your life. I want to ask you, I want to challenge you. Think about your life plan. Where did your life plan take you? Where, what were the relationships, your family relationships? How can you reframe how you look at some of those things? that you seem to be victimized by. Maybe you were the person that, you know, did something that needs to be understood with compassion in this lifetime. There's a lot of ramifications of this. Look at your life, see it as purposeful, see it and, and then ask yourself, where am I with my life plan? Am I really ready to do what Charles Fillmore talked about, which is, move out of the limited consciousness of the third dimension into the fourth dimensional consciousness. Move out of the limited box of the ego, the material life that we all think is so great, and move into, and open the trap door and move into that higher consciousness and not see yourself as limited anymore. You have the opportunity in this lifetime to to, to do some incredible work, to experience some incredible things. 
So what is your heart telling you right now? How do you want to handle this? Are you willing to make that, that shift in your life? Boy, I feel like I'm ready to make an altar call here. Oh boy, I'm kidding. But on the spiritual level, there's a place within your own heart where you can say, I, I, want, to get, I want to get serious about this. And then your life turns into an adventure because everything contributes to the whole. Then you're not just doing mindlessly, unconsciously, the doing your karma, doing your cause and effect, going around and coming around. You are actually engaged and consciously moving with your soul. You're lifting up and opening the door and climbing up that ladder. And it's not easy. It's not, it's not the easiest thing in the world to do. It's, you know, I thought, oh, I get into spiritual stuff and it'd be real easy. No, it's not. You got to work at it. But it's so fulfilling. It's so incredibly heart filling. It fills your heart. You start seeing relationships as purposeful and it stops taking everything so personally. Do you know how personally I take things sometimes? Oh my gosh. Somebody cuts me off on the road, and remember I talked about that three weeks ago? I mean, you know, tailgating me or something. When you realize, oh my gosh, I'm living from a different place, you don't have to take things so personally. It's not about them or you on an ego level. It's about moving your consciousness, moving your soul, moving your energy, redirecting your life, and having a different outcome. And what is that outcome? Infinite awareness. It's a lot better outcome, a lot more fulfilling outcome than, uh, you know, looking at your mutual funds and thinking you're so smart for picking that one and thinking you're just great. There's, when, when you pass over, I guarantee that that isn't going to be part of what passes before your eyes in, in, in your appreciation of your, your, your reflection on this lifetime. But what will matter to you is that you engage with your spiritual resources and you made the decision to live your life from a different place. My goodness, we can wake up right now and begin the process. And it's so fulfilling. Now that I'm finding that I'm repeating myself, I think it's time for, for us to just have a, a little prayer time. Okay, because it's, I think, I think the point has been made. The point has been made that we're souls in evolution that our purpose in evolving as a soul is to move from the limited box into the unlimited self whether you call it third to fourth dimensional or ego to soul whether you call it the limited self to the infinite self and just wherever you're at with this make the commitment to the truth of your being that you are desiring to find out more about who you are, to discover new potentials, and new opportunities for growth, to experience yourself not hemmed in by the walls of a box, but breathing with the free air the infinite sky of possibility and that desire that desire at whatever level you feel just make the commitment to the truth of your being to get to know and awaken and discover who you are and I'm going to use my will this week to take a little time to practice my awareness of the presence to practice this presence
Thank you, Greg. So we have some things to think about this week, right? Okay, so this is the time of our service where we want to bless our offerings, our gifts, our tithes. So if you can hold them in your hands or hold them in your consciousness, we have a couple of ways of giving. One is to drop your offering in the basket as you leave. If you want to give through a credit card, you can do that at the bookstore. Or we have our online app, which is called Tidely. There's information about that in the narthex. So I'm going to take our offering blessing and state at one time, and then I will ask you to join with me. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. God is the source, and I am the channel. Together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. God is the source, and I am the channel. So we take this moment to bless these gifts. We give thanks for the opportunity to give, to be part of the flow of God's goodness in this world. And so we open ourselves to give lovingly, openly. Because we know that these gifts are rushing forth to bless many. And they will return to the giver pressed down and overflowing with abundance. We know that we have so much to be grateful for in this world. We have been blessed. And so we give thanks for the many blessings in our lives. We bless our beautiful church. We bless our school, every child, every family, every staff member. And we know that unity of Delray Beach is that expanding center of Christ's life, blessing our community and blessing the world. And with that, we say thank you, God. Amen. If you'd like prayer after the service, there will be a chaplain at the front of the sanctuary. Uh, now, if you stand, we're going to sing the, prayer, uh, the uh, peace song. Thank you for joining us.